Will is installing the hood and deck lid on our 71 Challenger RT formal back roof car in preparation for the final FJ6 Green Go paint. After that, he will do the undercoating on it and move it over to the assembly shop where Dave will take over and start putting it together. This time on Graveyard Cars, Will and the Ghouls make progress on the 1971 Dodge Challenger RT, but Mark's constant intrusions give Will a rude awakening. Mark and Alyssa document a 1968 383 Magnum Charger, and when Alyssa discovers the build sheet, Mark gives her the impossible task of restoring the document. When Mark becomes suspicious of Will's paintwork, his investigation leads to a very unexpected secret. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. Coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Right now, I have the bright green Challenger in the booth, ready for the engine compartment to get jammed. I got the whole engine compartment sanded out nice. This is the last of the paint work that we have to do before the car goes to Ryan for final assembly, and then we'll start the final paint process. This car has gone quicker than some of our other ones. There wasn't any extensive metal work that had to be done. So it was basically get the car sandblasted, go through it, do our body work. So it went fairly quick, pretty much like the Phantom did. Okay, so right now I'm mixing up the uh, green single stage. I'll go in there, put two coats on the outside and probably three coats on the actual inside of the engine compartment. And then the last of the paintwork will be done. And then this will go over to Ryan for assembly. And then we can start the final paint prep. So now it's ready for the paint. Right now, uh, Alyssa and I are getting ready to inventory a 1968 Dodge Charger. This is a non-RT car. Uh, what's cool about it is it's a one owner car. Had one paint job, mostly survivor original type condition. I'm really excited to jump back here and see what the cars look like before we tear them mm -hmm. down. Okay, Alyssa, this is a 68 Charger. It's a 383 Magnum. I haven't done a Charger yet, and since I drive a Charger now, it's gonna be pretty exciting to see how the older original ones were done. A Couple interesting things before we get looking at the car that I like about them. The 68 Charger is considered to be the sleekest and the coolest of all the three of the second generation Chargers. Charger was introduced in 66, went through 67. That was the first generation. That was like the white one that we had last season in here. That great big one kind of looked like an upside down bathtub. Second generation, 68 to 70, the most popular of them all. Made popular by their look, but also in iconic movies like uh, Bullet. One of the things that's cool about 68, you look at this bezel that surrounds the headlights in here, yeah. It's meant to look exactly like a continuation of the grill. They oh, dropped that cool. in 69. So back here, there's just steel brackets back behind the headlight doors. Because when these come down. Oh, it finishes okay. the grill. So yeah, it's the sleek grill. But at night, vacuum motors would pull this open and they wanted to still have that cool look of the grill. So they kept the surround. Now 69 and 70, they didn't do that. Okay. While Mark and Alyssa begin documenting the 1968 Charger, Will continues the process of jamming the engine compartment for the 1971 Dodge Challenger RT. So I got the first coat on, everything looks like normal, no issues, uh, looks great. So I'll go back in there, put another coat on, and that should be about it. I'm gonna do three coats on this total. We don't cut them off the engine compartment, so I like to lay it out nice, and so that way when it comes out, it's done. You'll see the round side markers. That was the first year the Department of Transportation even required them. Prior to that, in 67, there were no side markers. This was so you could see a car at night from the side. They never had that before. They had reflectors. Oh, okay. These actually light up. In 69, they got moved down a little bit and they were square, almost square. They were a little bit of a rectangular. In 70, they had almost a teardrop shape to them. 
but that's the genesis of the, of the side markers. Standing at a glance, looking at a 68 to 70 Charger, just at a basic glance, very similar cars, very similar. The 70 had a flare that went right here that covered up these two scallops in the door. But the rest of the lines, the quarter panel lines, the door lines, where they intersect with the fenders, very, very similar, almost identical. These are called the bullet taillights. Everybody calls them the bullet taillights. Two round, bullet-shaped, if you will, taillights. I still think they got the bullet taillight nickname because in the movie with Steve McQueen, the villain was driving a jet black 68 RT that had the bullet taillights. Chrysler didn't call them that. They were just the taillights in 68. By 69, they got rid of the round circular taillights and they opted for a long one that kind of went like this. It was an elongated one and it was almost identical in 70, just slightly different trim on it and slightly different inlay pattern on them. So there's your one, two, threes on the second generation Charger. But you gotta admit, okay. considering this was 50 years ago, that's a good looking car. That's oh, a yeah. good, this sexy is, body style. This is still a good looking car. I love the scoops in the door. Looks I love like the headlights. Going. I mean, it was well thought out. Next time you go out in your little Charger, mm -hmm. take a real nice look at the this scoop. pattern in the doors. Take a look at the one in yours. Yeah, they're different, but you can see this influence in those front doors, that reverse scallop. Totally cool, totally That's one cool. One of my favorite parts about the body style of it. Paint's completely done, looks great. I'll let it sit in there for the day. Uh, I'll pull it out tomorrow. I'll get it over to Ryan and he'll start putting the whole thing together. Okay, these folks bought this car new, 1968 Dodge Charger. It's a 383 Magnum automatic transmission. XP 29HAB2925. So this car was built in Hamtramck, Michigan. That's what the B stands for. The eight, of course, is 68, and that H is the 335 horsepower 383 Magnum. Okay, this engine compartment, I've looked at this before. This is a really nice, clean, original, kind of an untouched engine compartment. All right. If you look at the paint on the valve covers, this turquoise is almost washed off. That's the typical original color for it. But you see that it's been washed and pressure washed so many times, all the paint's gone from it. If you look at other things in here, this is the original positive battery cable, but the end has been changed. This entire negative cable has been changed. I can tell by the look, they don't have this little pigtail on them from the factory. Battery's obviously different. But look at your ethylene glycol warning label here. That's, I know that's original. You got your fender tag that's never been off the car with the two original number two pan head screws on it. Everything in here needs to be documented. When you take your photos, I'm gonna expect 150, 200 photos under the hood. And it's because you've been working with Dave, right? Mm -hmm. How often does he stop in the middle of it and say, nope, wrong bolt? I mean, all the time. I realize how important it is now. Now that I can see what was actually supposed to be on the car, it's just, I can appreciate it. Before, when yep. I came back here with my dad, it was monotonous. It was a lot of information at once. But it's now, good. I just see the value in it so much more, so I'm excited. I realize how important it is to document and how valuable this car is. Well, what a us. vast yeah. wealth of knowledge it is before it's touched. That's great. That's good. That's good education for what you. What about this label? Yeah, that's the original maintenance sticker for the air cleaner, still intact. So when we go and we do this one or another one like it, another 68383 that uses the uh, cake pan style uh, air cleaner, if you want to know where to locate that decal, we'll go pop up a picture of this car. We'll look at your engine compartments and we'll say, oh look, it's about three or four inches away from the nipple yeah. for the breather. This looks too uh, new. That's too new, the master cylinder is too new, that's right. You can see when things pop out at you and they don't look right. Well now that I've been going with you, especially going you know, on location, mm -hmm. seeing the cars in the garage, you can tell now when things you are do. out of spot. It's starting that's to make sense too new. to you. Yeah, it's too clean, it's too. So with that, <clears throat> The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and raise it up in the air. Mm -hmm. We'll go underneath it. We'll take a good look at everything under there, document the bottom of it, show you what I want pictured and what I don't want pictured, what matters, what doesn't. Eight and three quarter rear end. This is all pretty original stuff right here. So much rust. This is just age, right? Things yeah, turn brown. You have to take a brand new piece of pipe, spray it with acid, move it out, get it wet, and set it in the sun for a couple days, and you think it's a 20-year-old piece of pipe. This is just old aged metal. That's different than deteriorated metal. This is actually, hear that? That's Still a, there. Yeah, that's solid. a good solid floor, yeah. When you do this and all you hear sounds like you're playing a hi-hat on a drum, then you got troubles. 
Now up here we have some weird rust right out of the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is the torsion bar cross member. And usually they rot in here, yeah, but this one's rotted all the way through out here. So we already know we're going to so be putting like the torsion bar. It's like stuck in it or something even. This one's pulled out from a tow hook, but it doesn't look at this point until we get it back from the dipper too bad. Sometimes these will rust out up here on the frame rail and the apron because of the battery acid, but this one actually looks pretty darn good. Like it survived pretty well. All of this stuff looks original to me, okay? <clears throat> The rest of the suspension looks like it's very much intact. You can just tell by the age of it, by the crusty. Look at your sway bar bushings. Yeah, you look at your flat. That was once rubber, right? These are, yeah. This one's rubber and this one's rubber and then it's surrounded on the top and the bottom. 66 to 70, 68, 67 to 70. No, 68 and 70, sorry. Disregard, <laughs> disregard. Right now we'll let it down. We'll check out the interior and we can start doing our photos. Right now, Will is washing out the paint booth in preparation for the 71 Challenger FJ6 S-Grass green car to come in, or, or go green as Dodge calls it. Um, I'm coming out to make sure that it's ready to be painted. I haven't had a chance after the pre-paint to double check the lines on it and to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. So right now is a great opportunity because Will's sidetracked and won't have him out there torturing me. I can get on the car, look it all over and give him a green light go. What are you doing? My job. I don't mind having them double check, honestly, but we have great body men here. The gaps are great. This car was a great car to start with. So there's really nothing to check over on this one. Oh, That's you're signing job. off on it now? Just taking a look, buddy. Well, I haven't washed it. I still got to get it all cleaned up first. I trust Will, all right? I trust him or he wouldn't be painting for me. But still, if something goes wrong or I don't like something, who's the guy that's got to pay the bill? Mark Warman, that's the guy. You can go on about your thing. You don't got to watch over me, buddy. You know, I'm here to help you. I know that. Don't burn a hole in the paint You're with your magnifying glass. not burn a hole in glass. the paint with a magnifying glass. I'm not stupid. <laughs> stupid. Could happen. Stupid. If you paint something with the wrong gaps and you can't get the gaps later, then you're sanding. And if you're sanding, you're repainting. 71 Dodge Challenger. Paint code, shoot. F, J, it's one of two, six. Six, yes. You're welcome. A little bit fatter right there at the fender, but that's the way they were from the factory. This has a 2000s discrepancy between the right hand bottom of the fender and the right hand top of the fender where it meets the door's leading edge, but the rockers are the same. So if you were to favor it, it would look worse in a certain area. This is what we call the Bermuda Triangle. This is a difficult area to match up the door, the rocker and the fender. Now, if you want to come out here and do a quick walk around, hey, it looks great, move on. But the silliness that comes with it, I think he's got much better stuff he could be doing. Let's see if you go. Search, you know, Friday's divine. Pi. Square root. And you divide that back into itself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Good, good, good. Uh, so far, everything I'm seeing on the car looks fine. All right, the hood's not on it yet, but I was able to check the gaps and make sure that it's at a point now where I feel comfortable getting it painted. Good, bolts are in. Count, check, count, check. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm seeing rust up here. I want to make sure there's metal etch on that. There will be. Everything looks good, though. Everything will work just fine, sir. All right, thank you. Again, I'll be here tomorrow morning when he's ready to start spraying it to help him out all the way through the paint process. I'm gonna get up early like I normally do and I'm gonna try to have this car knocked out before he even gets here. Have a seat inside there. These are cool. First off, take a look at the interior. Oh, that's awesome. The two-tone green? Yeah, I like the green. Interesting Excuse side note here. If the interior were white These in are 68, the seats were a pearl white. They weren't just white metallic. They weren't just white fabric or material. They actually had a pearl inlaid into them. Oh, that's cool. Really unique 68 set. But look at the map pouch here. That's what they call the map pouches. So you put your trash in there, your map or whatever. Anything you want to put in a map? Anything you want to put in there, Anything. Chris. Yeah. The center console. Gonna need a new one. The alphanumeric code for the center console is A6. That's alpha six, later to be C16. The alphanumeric code for the bucket seats, which you could get with or without a console, is Charlie Six Foxtrot. 
if you had an overhead console at, like in the E bodies, it was C26. Oh, hey, look, they're ready to go down to the lake yep, or the they're river. Heading out to the Let's not dead, open that. Dead Who knows stuff what's in, in there. there. Yeah. Uh, take a look at this. This is an original 68. Looks original. In 69, this area down through here. Let's see, in 69, this was silver and this was wood grain. But look at the condition of the dash. The little <laughs> bullet up there, that's factory. That yeah, what is round this? Thing. <laughs> I'm not just sure. Just a decoration, kind of. I'm not sure, but it, but all of them had it in '68. It did have it before you broke it. <laughs> it pops back in there. Yeah. Yes. 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 It does. Uh, you'll notice this vertical lines right here. This is unique to '68. This pattern. In '69, they went with a texture. In '70, they went with a texture. Unless it was an SE, and then this was wood grain in '69 and '70. And all this our teas cool, in '70. This is cool. How they slide? I've never seen Let those me before. Jump over the top, of me. It's just information. All the air conditioning, the heat. It's a slider. I thought that was really neat. Kind of lost her on that. I thought it was really cool. I mean, I've never seen. Slider, in the middle right? of teaching or something, and that she kind of. Okay, walked. I'm sorry. Look, they slide. He was super excited over the telling me about the, the, grain, the grain and the dash. And the and dash, and the, yeah, we'll you know. I got excited over sliders, so same thing. Who hasn't heard that a thousand times, right? Yeah, buttons, they go back and forth. That's really neat. You just, I mean. Okay, finish what you're saying. It was okay. super important. Notice that these plugs that go in this door are the same color as the door. Mm -hmm. Got to watch that in these. These are the little things, these are the little nuances that you have to document to make sure that we have it. So when somebody comes up in a year from now when we're putting it back together and says, nah, no, I never had them. Enchanté, mm. Masur. I do believe it did have them, and here's the photograph of it. You know, this little emblem reminds me of that round charger emblem. Yeah. And the door. I'll have to, have I, actually, to do why don't you research what that means? Because it does mean something, somewhere to somebody, and they have it. It can't be like a Star Wars thing. I don't think it's, I, I think it's a couple years early, 60s, a couple years early for Star Wars. I never watched any of those anyway. When did Star so Wars come out, 78? I have no idea. Probably 10 years later, I don't know. Never, big, never a big Star I Wars I know, fan. Dad, anything that anybody else liked. We if other people liked it a lot. If it was lot, too popular. Then it was it weird. It was Yeah. Yep. And, and look at me today. A perfectly normal, <laughs> healthy functioning adult. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, you can roll this thing forward. I want you to light it. I want you to photograph it. I want everything front to back. If you have less than a thousand photos, I'm not talking about the same photo over and over again to the front corner while you're playing on your phone. This what car about, like, is photos you. Like yes. This? If they must be selfies, make them selfies. I still want 1,500 selfies, yeah. There Do that, go. do one of the wipers. Oh, okay. Show the wiper, yeah. Yeah, got that wiper, good, okay. good. Turn signal Turn indicators are missing, make sure you get that. See? Okay, 1,000 of those, I got All right. it. Message received. Yep. And with that. <laughs> okay, Dad, thanks. Knock the door. Did they get a doorbell? Better not get a doorbell, huh? <laughs> Good morning, Will. What are you guys doing? We're here. We're painting the Challenger this morning, right? Here to go. I figured we'd start at the shop. No, we're starting early. You guys ready to paint a car? Let's paint this car. Exactly. Yeah. You open, you unlock the door, but then you lock it. And this keeps all the riffraff out, employees, that type of <laughs> Notice how it's quiet? See, it's peace, quiet, nothing happening. No craziness, no noise, nobody talking to me outside of you guys, but you guys are okay. I get more done coming in early in the morning because there's no distractions, nobody's here. So coming in early, I absolutely love. So I, I got four, three to four hours already in my day by the time everybody else even gets here. So I get, I'm the most productive before like 8.30 in the morning. Car is ready to go. It's still nice and peaceful. No craziness. Pretty much, you know, I double checked it all last night. Everything looks great, looks great this morning. Nobody screwed it up, nobody's messed with it. But it's a beautiful car. I mean, it's, it's, the screen's gonna be so bright as soon as I get done spraying it. You guys hear that still? 
so quiet. So this is our FJ6 single stage, bright green. So I got the paint. We are ready to go in and start spraying. All right, first coat laid down. Uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning. Everything looks great. Getting ready to go in, put my second coat of color on. And then uh, one more after that, we'll be done. So, so far, so good. So I was halfway through my second coat when we noticed the fly going around. Again, I don't know where they come from, but sure as there it is again. So I finished my second coat completely. Then I have to go back in there and try to get the fly. Um, luckily it was in a just kind of chill position. So we were smashed it and able to get it out of there. So it didn't land in the paint at all. Save the day. These show up out of nowhere. That was my second coat. I'm mixing up more paint right now. Um, this is gonna be my last coat. We're pushing eight o'clock. I don't, I'll have this thing wrapped up before he actually rolls in, so we'll be good to go there. Tell that fat boss of yours if he's doing one of these weird walk around things that I'd like to know of, and you're already rolling. You ever notice that DL upstairs looks exactly like the fat guy from Seven? Remember the guy that got kicked in the stomach and ate it, spilled his SpaghettiOs? Why? So you can get the bad side of me and share it with everybody? Well, none of that's making the edit. What's up? What's up? What, what are you? What's wrong? Benedict Arnold. Sweet, stop. You did it, didn't you? I love the smell of paint in the mornings. Do you? Huge. What's the matter? That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. What's cute? Mark comes out, he's a little over dramatic, starts doing his normal routine, but I, I know he's okay with it. I, he doesn't get mad very often. A little butt hurt, I'm sure, but like I said, he'll get over it, we'll move on. And now I got the whole day to do other stuff as opposed to spending a half a day filming with him just to get a car painted. You went below the hard deck. And you left your wingman. <laughs> Don't leave your wingman. Should now get... I'm goose. I got my back bashed in and I'm floating out to sea. No, we got in early. The guys were up. They were excited to do it. So we thought we'd come in and knock it out. You're welcome. The plan was we would get together this morning and I would guide him through the paint job on it. All right. I got the feeling based on the fact that he snuck in early that um, he doesn't need my help anymore. And that's okay. You know, first I was kind of mad about it. I let it settle down a little bit. I kicked everybody out while I could think things over because I like to think things out before I shoot my mouth off. Um, it's okay. I'm not upset about it. I think that there is a time, there is a rite of passage with everything in life. And I think that at this particular time, Will feels confident that he doesn't need my help. He shouldn't have to come in at wee hours of the morning to dodge me. Just be a man, come up and say, I don't need your help anymore, Mr. Warman, thank you. You know, he's never just said that. He always is saying, please give me more, feed me, you know, tell me more. I, I love your, your attention. I love your coaching. But, you know, I don't know. I can't read between those lines. So, did you just get here? Let me know when it flashes off. I'll be back. Okay. Well, go have your breakfast. Enjoy your morning. Write those I checks. Would've. <clears throat> I would have, but I got met by the Benedict Arnold, the new band. The Benedict. That's you guys. The Judases. Hey, Judas. Well, I think that went over pretty well. But hey, the car is done. You guys came in early. Thank you. Now we can actually move on and get some more stuff done today.
While Mark retreats to lick his wounds, Will prepares for the next phase in the Challenger's FJ6 Gringo makeover. No? I have a question for you. Don't, don't. No, I just wonder, <laughs> what's going on there? Did you pull my hair Turn your hair out. Turn around. What is this? It's hair. That isn't hair. What are you doing? That looks like something we drug out from underneath it. What are you doing? <laughs> what is, okay, you wanna see what I see? <laughs> That's what I see. I'm trying to have a conversation with you and this is what I see. Well, it's just ridiculous. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Yes it is. So right now, Mark's outside talking with the body man, going over another car. We're supposed to be doing this together, but I had the body man go over there and ask him a question. So now he's kind of tied up with that. I'm gonna to try to get this done real quick. This isn't a very long process, so I'm hoping I can get it done. Then I can go tell Mark, hey, there was a problem. We gotta let it just go back over it later. And then he'll be like, oh, okay, and then he'll leave. And then before you know it, I got the car over to Dave done my way. He's very easily distracted. He's got a million things going on. It takes a couple days to really set up. So I like to get this done right away because when it goes over to Dave, it comes off the whirly jig and then it sits on the fin pack. And actually, if it goes on there too soon, we'll actually smear it. So I'll give this a couple days in here, get good and hard. I went to go to the bathroom. What? I went to go to the bathroom. I, Where are you? I looked all over, I couldn't find you. So we just went ahead and got started. Okay. All right. Do you uh, do you move forward when you think you're done back here, or do you just jump around just whatever you like to spray? Because what I like to do is start from the back. Yeah, the back. Right, and then work my way forward. Front. So do you do everything as you're going, or just what you like? I try to get everything oh, by the yeah. time I get to the front. So you shouldn't but be at the front unless you were signed off on the back. But what I do is I'll go ahead and get it done, and because there's so many different angles, I'll go back make sure I didn't miss anything before I rotate it the other way. Okay, so stuff that you should get now, like in here Correct. and up yeah. in here. Well, I gotta flip it the other way. To get that? Right, exactly. To get that? Yes. Yeah. That right there? Yep. How would you get that if that was flipped upside down? Get what? up there. How are you gonna get this from here? Because that means you should be getting that from here. Very easy. Oh, please show me. I, I would just, love to see. I just did. No. Okay, you see this right here? Yeah. It's. There's no undercoat on it. 100%. <coughs> this is the same version of it, but on the other side. Right, right. Now I got that there. So when the car is flipped over and this is on the bottom. But you don't have that there. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. May I see that for a second? Can I see that for a second? Can I see that for a second? magic hat. This is like Frosty had that magic hat that he put on and he'd all the kids would play. Oh, yeah, I see why you wear it. It's a magic hat. Yeah, man, everything's cooler. Everything's mellow. What's up, man? What's up? So, I think this side's pretty well good. I'm gonna go ahead and take it, rotate it to its other side, and get the other bare areas that are needed. We go ahead and just cut now. If you want, we're, we're, I don't. As you were, 
actually, in this particular case, the last time he painted uh, undercoated one of these, I thought it was really thin. But when I w looked at it, even initially, even though I snuck in and did it when my back was turned, it's, it looks funny. It looks like the millage is correct. It has the right density to it. It has the right look, the right sheen. I, I think he did a good job. Thank you. Because what I did was I kind of just split the difference. He wanted it super Mysteriously thick. Mysteriously did a good job. Oh, he go wanted it super thick. Uh, I like it super thin. So we, I think we just kind of came up with a happy medi medium. It's not quite as thick as factory, but it's not as thin as some of the ones I've done in the past. But I think it's a happy medium. Um, I'm happy with that. He's happy with that. So I think this is kind of how every car will be from this point forward. He's got a magic hat. It is a magic hat. I was laughing, but I believe it's actually, no, you can laugh, but I figured <laughs> it out. That's ridiculous. Well, it might be ridiculous. So next car I paint, I'm not wearing it. Yeah, please don't wear it. I, I would love to see you not wear it. Just watch. I noticed this while I was in there. Are you watching? You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, you're standing on your tippy toes. No, I'm not. I grew to it. <laughs> With the documentation of the 1968 Charger nearly complete, the ghouls are let loose to disassemble the vehicle. They still have to take the vinyl top off and a couple of moldings, but otherwise, the car is completely disassembled. A couple things to show you that are easy to see right now. I'm excited to walk around the car at this stage of the process. Kind of like a sheep with a shepherd <clears> kind of <throat> walking it through the, through the hazardous stuff. I don't know if I'd say stuff. that. Wow. But. Remember in 68 was the last year that they put the shipping order number in the body panels, not the VIN number. And so you've got a VIN number written down still from when yeah. you looked at it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Here though you see Bravo 8 X-ray. Yeah. And then it's got 105021. That's not going to match the VIN number on the dash. It's only going to match the shipping order number that's on the fender tag. So when we're done, I'll grab you the fender tag, but write down that SO number right there. So again, this won't match the VIN. It'll only match the shipping order number, and the shipping order number only appears on two pieces of nomenclature that you get with the car. One is the fender tag. The other is the build sheet. We didn't find a build sheet in this car, so we have to hope that the Fender tag matches that number, and that means that core support hasn't been replaced. The other area of the B bodies from 68 on up, other than the 71, I call them B bodies, so it's your 68, 70, Charger, Roadrunner, Satellite, GTX, those kind of cars. 68, they put what number on the core support? The shipping order. That's what, and that's what you've written down there, right? Yeah. It's not gonna match a VIN. In 69, they put the VIN on the core support, so it's okay just to match the core support and the trunk lip up to the dash VIN. What's the shipping order number? Because I understand the VIN breaks down. You it's kind of like, like a VIN is assigned to a car, a shipping yeah. order number is assigned to a car. Okay. And so they reference that on the assembly line as well as to what shipping order number it is. And then they assign it a VIN. So it's a way to keep track of that one particular car. It's very much like a VIN, but it's just not. On the B bodies, Oops. underneath moose. this weather strip right here. Why am I a moose? You got your foot in the way. <laughs> it was your foot. <laughs> And scrape this down, and we should find another version of the shipping order number. It gets lots of paint and crap in there, so you got to clean that out. So let me grab a rag and some brake cleaner real quick. Okay. So if the trunk lip, which I suspect does match the shipping order number on the core support, and I suspect will match the fender tag, at that point, we'll know that we have a numbers matching body at least. See if you can make that number out. <clears throat> D-A-X-I-0502-I. And how's that match up against the one on the radiator support? Perfect. Perfect, okay. The body numbers all match on this car, that's great. Even though I can see by these welds right here, these bubbles, I think it's had a quarter panel put on it at some time. It's too bad because it's already rotten out. That right there is a, what's remnants of a broadcast sheet. Is that oh, it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. So here's your mission should you decide to accept it. This is Mission Impossible. I want you to get this to open up to the best oh. of its ability. Sometimes you can use a little bit of moisture on it, like a spray. I don't want you going Johnny Bananas on it and just ripping it open and coming up to me and saying, yeah, Dad, I couldn't get it, couldn't get it spread out. <laughs> I'm going to know. I, mean, I would be able to just look at it and I can tell by the rip that it was crazy rip, coffee rip, 
if you want berserk I'm just on caffeine. Say now that he, no matter how just, I bring the broadcast sheet to him, it's going to be I went berserk. So this has got to be straightened out on your desk where it's legible the best you can. So we ended up finding the build sheet in the 68 Charger when my dad and I were walking around it. So I'm hopefully going to be able to flatten out the build sheet so we can get some information off of it. I've never done anything like this before. Um, my dad said to use water. So I'm going to take our steam cleaner and kind of moisten it up and flatten it out some. Hopefully I can get it nice and flat so that we can figure out what wheels and tires came on the car. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that was a full on street. Okay, I didn't... I'm glad that wasn't on the paper. One of the main things we're looking for is the wheel and tire combo. The owner didn't remember what wheels and tires came on it, so hopefully we can flatten out the build sheet and figure that one out. So far, using the steamer has worked the best, and uh, tweezers, and just kind of picking at each fold and slowly pushing it out. So this upper right-hand corner of the build sheet that my dad said we probably won't be able to get much information off of, it's looking like it's coming out OK. So I'm going to try to save that as much as possible can actually make out some of the writing, like the headrest, door, upper frame, foam seat. So it looks like we can. I can actually read some of the writing on here. So might come out better than expected. So what I'm trying to figure out now is if this back piece back here is attached like that, because I've gotten it mostly, or if it's just stuck to the build sheet by a sticky substance and it actually isn't attached straight. It's terrifying. Like, I think I'm gonna ruin this. It doesn't seem like it wants to come out at all. It seems like when I use the humidifier that it gets a little bit wet and wants to tear. So it's not going so well so far, so. Okay, it looks like we found the wheel and wheel covers. So the wheel, says 16B, wheel covers 79. I don't know what that means, but my dad will definitely know what that means. And I think that's the information we were missing for this charger. So I got the build sheet as good as it's gonna get, I think. <laughs> I think my dad's gonna be pretty surprised. I think it turned out better than expected. So this is the way I believe it went in the car. Oh, you got it. Oh, Look nice. how good that looks. And you can see the wheel covers and the well, tires. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say it looks great. Well, I'm sorry. What did you expect for it to look like? Well, I would have thought it was legible. <laughs> well, um, let's see. Wheel, 16B, wheel cover 79. I know All you're right. old. Should I get your magnifying glass? Right. Let Big Daddy take a gander at what we got here. You know, when you find a broadcast sheet in a car, even if it's deteriorated like that, it's still a piece of the history of the car. That one we really don't have any way of knowing because the VIN's gone off the top of it. But it was definitely worth taking time, spreading it out, opening it up so you could see it, cleaning it the best we could, and trying to get what information we could. If for no other reason, just to say we have a partial broadcast sheet. It's not much of a find. And so back then, of course, it was new and it was legible. Now it's pretty chewed up with rust and it's, it's not very legible. Regardless that we didn't get any information off of it, really, I still think that it was really valuable for me to learn how to do it. I will ask Tony, because I'm not really up to speed on that 16B wheel. I have a feeling that's a black wheel and 79's a wheel cover. There's two things on here that are fairly legible. There's the shocks that are right here, and there's the torsion bars. So since I have torsion bars here, I'll give you an example. So here, that number 780. Yep. Okay, that's the right-hand torsion bar. This is the, R too. So and it has the R. 80. And R. then this one. Now, these are the Hemi bars. So these are bigger around than the ones that came out of that charger. Therefore, they hold more weight. And they put the Hemi suspension because they wanted the car to be more stable. And a 440 and a 426 Hemi, which was the two engines that would have came in an RT, one optional 426 Hemi, the 440 standard, are both much heavier than the 383. So they wanted a heavier bar. And I learned a lot. Good. And I Good. learned how to use Lesson the steamer learned. because there was knowledge. A, there was a learning curve there with the steamer. So Do you used a steamer. I used a steamer to like help um, bring. Not like, on my oak table apart. upstairs. No, not on your oak table. No. Okay. But anyways, it was a great learning experience, regardless. Speaking of learning, the ghouls learned a lot this week. Alyssa got a crash course in document restoration, 
and a few lectures on the genealogy of the 1968 Charger. This pattern in the doors, you can see this influence in those front doors. Mark learned the secret behind Will's painting powers and possibly other abilities. Whether or not there was magic in that old hat, Will's assertive early morning paint job on the FJ6 Green Go Challenger came out spellbindingly perfect. With the paint job complete, Will can get on to the next phase of the Challenger's restoration. This part of the process is awesome It's because we're getting done with the car. We'll get the hood on, the deck lid on, then we'll kind of just do like a good overview, double check our gaps, make sure the paint looks perfect, just make sure everything is 100% ready to go over there before it does. Hey, George. Oh, hey, Will. What's going Butter on, bean? buddy? Butter you bean. can lift this side up. And... Oh, what would you need? Well, this hinge is down, so. Oh, not a problem, not a problem, my friend. I just didn't want to get close to the fresh paint, you know? George has me a little nervous right now. Uh, he's not used to with stuff that's fresh paint. His carefulness isn't as good as Ryan's. Well, now that Ryan's done a perfect job putting the deck lid on, we can go ahead and get the hood on. Can you be careful with that side? The car looks amazing. Hood's on it, deck lid's on it. This car is done, ready to go over to Dave. Mr. Warman, Mr. Ray, you guys have a second? Um, I was gonna open the door and then have you guys help me push the Challenger through. Well, we were having a conversation. What I'm more curious Dave, about is that. Are you busy? No. no okay, thank you. Go. So I'm gonna open the door and bring it through. Okay. Perfect, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm just wondering, what's with the hat? Yeah. Uh, do you mind just pushing? Yeah, I'll what's, what's with the hat? Uh, I'm doing the hat just to prove a point. Uh, Mark says the other hat is a magic hat. And it, my work is phenomenal when I wear that hat, and thank you. Impeccable, perfect. Okay, thank you, that's a Which, compliment. In a world where there's no such thing as perfect. So I appreciate See what that. See I'm getting, that's the supernatural so, part. I'm trying to prove a point that, hey, we can still do a quality job no matter what hat I wear. May I borrow it for a second? Yeah, of course. Okay. I like it. It's nice to talk with you. And there's nothing different about it, nothing at all. When I put that other hat on, dude, I felt like Frosty. I was dancing and singing, and there was snow coming down. Eight or kids was running around sticking carrots in my stomach. So let me ask you this. Are you comfortable with me painting a car with that hat? Not really. <laughs> you painted without the magic hat for 15 years, and that's where you got your nickname, Run DMZ. Well, I don't know about all that. And now they come out like a sheet of glass. Huh. Yeah. Just saying, I'm not a superstitious kind of guy, right? But. How could he not paint before and now he can? And it, I think all the magic's in that hat. It might be, yeah. Well, we'll see how the sombrero does. Back so here's what's gonna happen. If I do anything in this hat, it's gonna be picked apart. That is not true. I picked your other side. I've been in there with a magnifying glass and a, and a thermometer, all right? I, I so look for my, close. For, Have you done anything to this car at all since with that, yeah. with that hat? Okay. Can I ask what that was? I took Dave's little spray detailer, <laughs> uh -huh. and then I wiped it down. So you cleaned the wax and the... Yeah, it's all over. This is the old will I was looking for. It's all over the edges. Picking he should have wore his other hat. Do me a favor, I don't care if you want to wear your sombrero, that's totally fine. But when you're working on my cars, could you put the magic hat back on? That's fine. This is the first car we, at least since I've been here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Dave, um, the lines look got, great. Thank you, I got the parts and pieces done for you. So it's a, mat it's a matter of get the vinyl top put on.